Welcome to the special spotlight on the Grand Prairie ISD Council of PTAs. That's a new name for the City Council of PTAs under the new rules. We're just delighted that we are able to spotlight the final two past presidents of that wonderful City Council. We've been working all year trying to find the right slots to bring these two presidents to you. And we're so pleased today to welcome, first of all, Lynette Cosby. Lynette. Hi, Ruthie. Good well, to see you again. Welcome to the set again. It's been a long time yes, since, we, since we've had you front and center. And Debbie Brubaker, we are so glad to get you captive today on two different sets <laughs> to be on It's Happening and then finally for this uh, a presentation of the past presidents of the Grand Prairie City Council of PTA. They celebrated, or we celebrated, our 50th anniversary all during the year of 1996. And we're really trying to get this under the line before 1997 comes about uh, and to finish this up. And as the president of that city council in 1958 through 1960, I felt very moved to get us all documented and get this all in one great big wonderful uh, documentary to send to the Texas PTA maybe on one of their anniversaries and let them know we cared about that. So we're glad to welcome you all. First of all, Lynette, we're going to talk with you a little bit, okay? okay. All right, Lynette, uh, before we get into your PTA service with your permission, uh, tell us a little bit about the real Lynette Cosby and when she came to Grand Prairie, Texas. Name your family and just some little personal things to uh, uh, set this uh, into the right perspective, would you? Oh, goodness. Well, I moved to Grand Prairie in uh, 1972. We bought a house here and, and moved to Grand Prairie. We'd previously lived in Irving. We had one child at that time. She was two years old. Her name is Trelisa. Uh, <clears throat> Our second child was born in 76 here in Grand Prairie while we were living here. Her name is Christine, and we call her Christy. And we have the two children. My husband's name is Wayne, and he's a radiologic technologist with St. Paul Medical Center and a, quite a clock and watch enthusiast. He, that's his extra thing he does is works on clocks and watches. He loves to do that. He does it almost every evening. Um, I started in PTA when my oldest daughter, Trelisa, started to kindergarten and worked with them at um, Rayburn Elementary was at where she Rayburn. started. Uh -huh. okay. She started at Rayburn. We stayed there two years and they opened Zavala and we moved to Zavala. What'd you do at Rayburn in the PTA? I was hospitality chairman. Oh. I started and worked my way up. All right. That was the first thing I did. It was a fun way to get to meet people. And uh, I worked in almost every other chairmanship in office through the years because from 76 until last year, I've been had some spot in PTA through either the locals or district or council and loved every minute of it. How about at Zavala? At Zavala, oh goodness, I did all sorts of things there and wound up, uh, I believe it was 81, I was the PTA president there. Mm -hmm. Worked with some wonderful people. We had a great dynasty that came through Zavala. We had Judy Johnson and Barbara Hawes and Susan Overton and a lot of those, Steve Overton, a lot of those good people that really worked with the kids here in Grand Prairie and it was a wonderful experience. Uh, who were the, some of the movers and shakers in the uh, Grand Prairie ISD staff at that time? Your principal, uh, Mr. Berryhill? Gene Berryhill was All the principal right, I where guess I was. Right, I well, didn't Oh, he? yes. He, he's a wonderful man. Yes. Really a PTA supporter and, and valued parents' involvement in his school, which was one of the things that made our PTA so strong there. Is he, mm -hmm. he let you work with your kids and come and do the volunteer work and help the teachers where you could. And uh, he was he was great, and we went through uh, Jackson Middle School. All right. And um, what did you do there? Burnout Alexander was one of the principals when we were going through there. Um, what did I do there? Were you president? No, I wasn't president at Jackson. That's the only you school were, I was. You were cruising. I was a, I was a <laughs> worker. I wasn't mm -hmm. I wasn't the president. Mm -hmm. I did some of the chairmanships mm -hmm. there, and then we went on to South Grand Prairie High School. And, uh, you were president there. I was president there and uh, went through a lot of different principals there. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you struggle more in high school because parents get less involved. You have to really encourage people to, to keep involvement in the middle school and the high schools. But we still had pretty good involvement there from our parents. That's the, the bottom line when you're working in PTA is to get all your parents involved and to work well with the teachers so the children can benefit. 
and then I worked in council. All right. What year were you council? Pre Before you were council president, <coughs> you worked your way up the ladder. Oh, yeah, that. I did uh, newsletter and, mm -hmm. oh, I don't know, a lot mm -hmm. of other things was uh, aide to the president. And then uh, 83 through 85, I was council president. Okay. And then I did parliamentarian several times after mm -hmm. that for various ones. Well, for Debbie, as a matter of fact, yes. one of her years, I did that for her, and we had fun. 83 to 85. What excitement happened in 83, 85? Oh, we did all Who was the superintendent of the schools? And oh, we, how did you we had Hobbs Williams. Okay. He, was, he was our okay. superintendent, and we worked on bond committees and, and uh, did beautification projects that you helped us with. And we won a state award for one of our beautification uh, projects at that time, which was really nice. We got to go down and accept that at one of the conventions. Yes. Uh, one other year, we won the parent education uh, chairmanship for the state Paffle. of Texas. Paffle. at that time yes. it was called. Mm -hmm. Susan Overton was my chairperson then, and uh, she had told me, because we're uh, friends as well as PTA mates, mm -hmm. and uh, she had told me one time that was one chairmanship she had always wanted to do, so I asked her to do that, and she mm -hmm. did a bang-up job, and we want, wound up winning the state award. I have to tell you about what the award was. It was this wonderful bucket with a handle. And someone took the trouble to paint blue bonnets all over the bucket and the ladle. It was just beautiful. And then they made this huge wooden case to carry it around in because it was supposed to be a traveling trophy. Yes. So Susan and I went to Corpus Christi to pick that up, not realizing it wouldn't fit inside the plane with us. I see. And we didn't have a box to protect it, so we had to wind up letting that go into the cargo hole. And we were worried to death. We was afraid it was going to be a shamble when we got it back here. But it made it. It was really sturdy, and they didn't even bang it up very much. So we got to use it that whole year. Really enjoyed it. It was it was a lot of fun. And now it's still traveling. It's in the still state. traveling. I understand. Or I think no, actually, I think somebody told me just a few they years ago it. they retired it because it was so bulky, and people did fly to a lot of the conventions, and it was hard to get it back home. Mm -hmm. After the Council of PTAs and your wonderful service there. I know it's all of these things, oh, yes. your campaign ribbons. I, I'm a, a, a pen person, yes. and I have mm -hmm. all these that through the years you I've are, collected. Are you a life member of any of this I'm stuff? I'm a li Texas life member, national life member, and um, just in the last few years in the extended service, which I was very proud of. Uh, although I do have one pen right here that I'm especially proud of as a regular pen because the year I was PTA president at Zavala, they raised the PTA dues. Oh my. Kind of upset folks a little bit, and yeah. not as many people wanted to join. Our unit was the only one that won these that year. I see. In Grand Prairie. So I'm especially proud of that. Yes, yes. My membership chairman worked really hard. Oh, I would think so. <laughs> and then did you go on to district? Uh, yes, I worked on district two PTA. I was youth protection chairman. I was vice president for the area. Got to teach wonderful seminars and things for the district. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a lot of fun. We would go in groups. You went with us part of the time. Uh, Judy Johnson, uh, Peggy Ellard, a lot of the ladies in the community that, that taught the things. And uh, we would go uh, to the different cities where they were starting new units and things like mm -hmm. that and help them with their instruction. And that was great fun. And what are you doing now? I'm working now outside the home and outside of PTA. I where work for St. Paul Medical Center. Are you at St. Paul Medical Center? Mm -hmm. Where are your two girls? My now? girls, uh, my oldest daughter, Trelisa, is in Houston now. She just became a lawyer, and she's working. She has a job. Excellent. And my younger daughter, Christy, is still here in Grand Prairie with us. Mm -hmm. They're both married yes. and uh, just growing up on me. Yes. And your work uh, at the hospital, is that exciting? It is exciting. In fact, it's been really hectic this last year. We've had a merger with Harris Methodist and St. Paul Medical Center, and they've mm -hmm. kept us really busy. Mm -hmm. That's the reason we haven't been able to get you <laughs> on this right. day. That's exactly right. A lot, lot of hours at, at the job. Yes. We're going to get back with you in a few minutes, but we need to get uh, on around to Miss Debbie and document a little bit of the things about Miss Debbie. Debbie, when did you come to Grand Prairie, Texas? Oh. Years ago, I don't even know what year. All right. <laughs> I was in fourth grade, about 64, 65. When you we were... moved to Texas from Missouri. All right. And um, I married in 73. Did you attend any of the Grand Prairie schools here? Yes, I attended um, Lamar, I attended Adams, and I graduated from South. Went to Grand Prairie High for six weeks, and my parents built a house on the south part of town. So. Just tainted enough to be part <laughs> gopher. I was a gopher yes. a little while. <laughs> and um, 
had children, had my son in, in 1980. Well, let's name your sweet husband that aids and abets you all of the time. Donald. <laughs> that is a gopher. Yes. <laughs> Both of my Donald kids are Brubaker. gophers now, too. Yes. Okay. Um, my son, children. Charlie, was born in 80. My daughter, Nicole, in 82. When Charlie was in kindergarten, I started PTA, paid my dues the first day of Where? kindergarten at Crockett. At Crockett, so both Charlie went, went to through, Crockett. Both of them went through Crockett and then Lee, and they're both at Grand Prairie High now. Have a both junior and a freshman. At Grand Prairie High School. Mm -hmm. And yet a warrior mother is raising two <laughs> gophers. Isn't that yes. exciting? <laughs> oh. We have arguments when, when it's okay, that Grand Prairie that's... High South game. <laughs> yeah, all right. And um, did your mother go to the PTA? Yes. Oh, she yes. did. She set she a good did. pattern for you. You better name drop her then. Her name's Minnie Stone. Yes, and she mm -hmm. set the stage for you, and you knew if mother could be a room mother and, and PTA. And um, uh, tell me about uh, wanting to be in the PTA when your children got here. Well, I wanted to be involved with my children, wanted to know what was going on in the schools, and I thought that was the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. I volunteered in the school a lot. I started out as vice president of Crockett and went on the next year to be president. I was telling Lynette earlier, for 11 years, I was either a president or a vice president somewhere. Somewhere, <laughs> oh, that is great. So. And, uh, and all this time, you were aiding and abetting your children as they were Right. coming into the right. PTA. You want to name drop anyone from Crockett that was special, like principals or teachers or oh, something? I had or three great principals when we were at Crockett. I, Mr. Farr, Mr. Greg Farr, and Beverly Flannery, and, that, and then Mike Mattingly. Yes. They were all three at Crockett. Yes, and then, and, you, uh, then you went on to Lee? Went on to Lee, Tony Lawrence, and uh, Mr. Mojica, Abel Mojica was at Lee. Yes. And now Mr. Berry at Grand Prairie High. What did you do at, uh, you were President and Vice President at Crockett and Lee and all of these other places? Yes, in between, I was President, Vice President, then President at Crockett. Then I went to uh, Council. I was President's Rep at Council one of those years that I was President. Mm -hmm. The following year, I became aide to the President under Doris Ford. At the Council? At Council level. Between and Crockett and, and Lee. Lee. Oh my, you got an early start in that council PTA, mm -hmm. didn't you? It was fun. And you served fun. two years doing that. Right. All right, tell us what happened those first two years in the city council PTAs, well, 90 through 92, that you said that was 89 <laughs> through 91. There was some time back then, <laughs> too far ago. Yes. Um, we got the uh, runner-up of outstanding council for the state for a medium district, that's yes, medium school sized district, medium uh -huh. sized school district, okay. and that was exciting. I, the convention was in Dallas that year, and they called us up on stage, and we were really excited that we got that. We won that through um, lots of training, going out to individual schools and giving them training and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Teaching them leadership and parliamentary leadership skills. Leadership skills, and, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's we cool. tried something new. We tried, instead of a big where everyone came to you. We tried to do it one-on-one. -on -one. We went to the school and tried to have a leadership. Lynette helped me with a couple of those. Yes. And it seemed to help a little. It was more one-on-one. On, on their one. home ground. Right. Yes, that was something new for the Council mm -hmm. of PTAs. To they do didn't feel it. intimidated to ask a question about a problem that they might not want everyone to know about. It was just in their, you know, one-on-one -on, -one on their territory. Oh, I think that's So it wonderful. was real, really exciting. In those two years, who was the superintendent of schools when you... Dr. Crawford. Dr. Crawford mm -hmm. was the superintendent of schools. Mm -hmm. Any highlights of those two years that, uh, other than winning this big award? Oh, there's lots, too many to Who'd name. you work with uh, that was exciting? Oh, Lynette. A lot of, lot of people helped me through that since I was kind of a newcomer to council. It was good to have that experience behind me. Mm -hmm. um, Rachel Weems was a big help. When I had a problem, I'd call her and... Our phone lines were busy all the time talking to each other. Um, you helped tremendously. Did you work out of the home or anything during those times when you were uh, on council? In the beginning, I was not working. I was at home with my children the first year of council. Then the second year, I opened my business back up, Deb's Basket. All right, and you ran a business, was the council, and then involved in these other two schools and all of this? 
Don may have really helped you those two years. He answered the phone as PTA Central. So. <laughs> <laughs> then I went back and did it again in 94, 95. Yes, but let's talk about between 92 and 94 in those two years interim, you left the council, went back and worked at Lee or at Lee at mm -hmm. Lee Middle School. Mm -hmm. What'd you do there? Also worked at Jefferson. It was the first year of the sixth grade being at Jefferson, and my daughter was that year. So I didn't hold any offices there, but I helped with Jefferson PTA there. with the PTA. And then so I kind of and went. then back to Lee. Then back to Lee. Okay, mm -hmm. and then to Grand Prairie High School. What, what's happening at Grand Prairie High School? Well, lots of good things. I've mm -hmm. been a couple of chairmen there. I haven't gone on to be president there. That's yes. because pushing a little far. <laughs> but this 94, 95, uh -huh. why did you, after you'd served two years in the council, it's very unusual for a president to come back and serve the third year. Um, uh, what happened? Well, the nominating committee called me and I told them no way. Then they called me again and said, we can't find anyone. Will you do it? So I agreed to do it for one year only. One more year. And then you're <laughs> going to get in there and really develop some new leadership, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. and, and hopefully we have. Yes, hopefully yes, that's we, wonderful. We accomplished that. And in that year of 94, 95, uh, what do you think was your greatest victory there? Getting new leaders? Mm -hmm. Working with the schools. Is that when you got okay. Nell and some of the others? Who were your followers then? Nell was in between my years. I Nell see. Rogers. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. She was in between my years. Kathy Browning came in in that last year of my service. Yes. And now she's gone on. She's the council president now. She is very, very adept at uh, doing her council job. Isn't that mm -hmm. wonderful? Mm -hmm. That's, and she also works in one of the schools, I believe. Yes, Jefferson. At Jefferson Middle School. Okay. And now that we have you out of all of these presidencies, uh, of the three years that you served as council president, which was the one that was the most fun? The second year. The sec it was after the first one, after I knew what I was doing. It was a breeze. Yes. Everyone did their job and, 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 and 91, it was fun. 91, 92 was the magic year. Mm -hmm. And this other one, you just kind of held it together because they needed you. Oh, I'm, I'm glad that 91, <laughs> 92 was a, a, a real special year. And since you've been out of, of the council presidency and you're into Grand Prairie High School, what do you really feel like is the need of the PTAs today and, and what each person can do? We need involvement, especially at the high school level. Um, everyone seems to be real involved in elementary years, but those high school years is when the kids really need that involvement. Um, it's kind of spread out with all the other booster clubs that's, that you can be a part of in high school, but we really need those parents' involvement in high school. Mm -hmm. And now that your um, children are in high school and you have your business, Deb's Baskets, uh, is there anything else you're doing in the community? <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> That was, I, a, that was a rude question as, as much as I know that, that you're That president doing. thing just can't get away from me. I'm going to be president of the Women's Division of the Chamber of Commerce starting in January. Yes. Um, Is that I for a year or two years one or three? Year, one year. One year. Mm -hmm. What do you do in that? Um, help with the chamber events that mm -hmm. go on, uh, hold the meetings for the Women's Division, get women involved. Do you think community. that being president of the PTAs and the city council have helped you in any way prepare yourself for leadership in the women's division or anything else you're doing? Yes, yes, a lot. Tell me I'm why. also in a leadership, the leadership Grand Prairie class of this year. Yes. Um, I think uh, being in PTA has helped me be diplomatic, see both sides of the story, yes. follow the rules. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a lot of people don't realize there's rules that you have to go by or uh -huh. there'll be chaos. Yes. Tell me about your business. Is that exciting to own your own business and operate it? <laughs> a lot of work. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's very exciting. The flower shop business is really exciting. You're doing something different every day. You might be doing something for a new baby one day, a wedding the next, the mistletoe ball the next. That's And you're working on that now? Mm -hmm. And that's for the Hospital Foundation. What do you do in that group? I'm in charge of decorations for that. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. 
It's a big it, is it a secret since it's Mardi Gras? Are you going to tell us any uh, little preview of what's coming up this uh, Friday night? Oh, we've got lots of silent auction items, great, wonderful entertainment. It's going to be a lot of fun. And lot pretty fun. decorations? Yes. Of course. <laughs> All Mardi Gras? Mardi Gras decorations, along with some Christmas. It's kind of mm -hmm. hard to do Mardi Gras and Christmas mm -hmm. together, but it, we did it. And your really latest adventure that we just couldn't uh, pass up on, uh, having the franchise for Miss Grand Prairie. What are you going to do with that? Well, hopefully we can get a lot of Grand Prairie girls interested in becoming involved in their community and serving Grand Prairie in that capacity. That's great. All right. You're looking for past Miss Grand Prairieans, mm -hmm. and you're looking for some that want to enter this next time, right? Have right. You, do you have any signed up? Yes, we have several signed up and a couple from Grand Prairie, in fact. That's what we're working toward is to get some Grand Prairie girls. Oh, yes, that's going to be wonderful. Well, your PTA has really been a stem winder for you, uh, beginning with your mother in the PTA and you're following in her footsteps and then being president and vice president and then council uh, president and on into president of other things. Uh, we're going to get back with you in a minute if we have the time, but let's get back to Lynette now a little bit. Lynette, I'd like to know how you feel that, uh, about your experience in your PTA service, what it's done for you personally and maybe to your family, uh, if it's been a plus or if it's been a minus. Look out into your camera let's talk about that. Well, PTA is definitely a plus. All the training that you get for leadership and parliamentary procedure, the friendships that you make uh, are just just absolutely wonderful. I've made some, some friends through PTA that um, will be lifelong friends and they're wonderful people. They care about kids, they care about um, what goes on in our community. Uh, I enjoyed all the work I did. There was a lot of hours involved and my husband was very, very sweet to let me do all that. He used to tease me and ask me when I was going to get a full-time job and I told him I had one. And um, I looked at it that way. It was a real commitment for me because I feel like if you believe in something, you need to give 100%. And I felt like the kids, I wanted the best for my children and I felt like the best way to accomplish that was to work for all children. And when you do that, you receive a great personal reward because you see all the, the things that do happen because of the work that you've given. And um, it's, it's a very rewarding thing. I'd like to know uh, who are some of your main mentors that you had uh, to bring you into PTA service and especially at the council level because you're taking on not just a small PTA right. but all 26 or, or 15 or ever how many local PTAs that you right. had. Well, I would have to say probably Judy Johnson was the one that really got me uh, deeply involved in PTA. I was already involved in working with her and seeing her commitment and her um, the way she presented herself and presented PTA to people, it made me want to be able to do that in the same type of manner that she did. Uh, Barbara Hawes, I worked with her a lot. She's a wonderful lady and, and I gained a lot of experience and once I got to council level I got to meet you and you were a great help to me at times when I needed and I'd call on you a lot and I always felt like uh, not just PTA but any organization, when you can have an organization that has individuals with experience that are willing to share and you combine that with the new people coming in and their enthusiasm, you're going to have a wonderful organization. And that's what I always tried to present to people when I was teaching them about PTA, to keep your experienced people there for help and guidance but bring in your new people so you'll have their new ideas and all the new things that are happening and you get a really good mix and the things you can do for kids are just, it's just huge what can, can happen. That's wonderful. Uh, would you explain to uh, the viewing audience how as a family person you melded all of this together and made it work out for the family so that uh, they weren't impoverished when you <laughs> would go away to state convention and would you attend the state conventions and oh, go yes, to all we, of them? Oh yes, I went to the state conventions. The first one I went to was in El Paso 
and my youngest daughter was small at the time and my husband graciously con consented to take off work so he could keep her and get my older daughter to school so that I could go and all those experiences were, were very beneficial. Uh, I'm sure they missed me while I was gone because I did the day-to-day -day things, the carpools and the, and the taking to the lessons and he would say, you mean she has to go there while you're gone? <laughs> and I'd say, yeah, she has to go just because I'm not here. Doesn't mean she doesn't get to go. And he was very gracious about uh, seeing the things for me when I had uh, something like that that was really important to me to get to go to and he was always very supportive and I tried very hard to schedule the PTA things around family things so that there was time for both mm -hmm. because the reason I was in PTA was my family yes and so I, I tried really hard I always uh, made sure they had something to eat before I left to go to a PTA meeting and things like that just so they didn't feel that they were being neglected are you still involved in the PTA well this year I, I don't hold an office anywhere first time since 1976 I don't have have a chairmanship or an office. Uh, I've just about reached my saturation point for council though because they have a rule that you can only work there so many years. The state PTA did that a few years back and I think I might have maybe one more year or something. Almost almost finished on that so but I really enjoy the involvement. It's been wonderful. All the way from the time when your children started to school through your tenure last year at the council and on up into the district and attending state conventions, what was the most rewarding year or experience of all of those for you? And we have about one minute left on our interview. One thing really stands out, um, I helped elect a state PTA president, which was wonderful, Mary Short. We nominated her from the floor, Judy Johnson headed that up, and we felt like it was her year to do that, and we got her elected, and I enjoyed that a lot. Well, she'll be so glad that you mentioned her. She is the president of my North Texas registered section of parliamentarians. Is she really? This year. Oh, she's a wonderful and, lady. And we'll have to get regards so, to her. So knowledgeable. Just Very. so knowledgeable and led our state two wonderful years. It was great. Yes. Well, I want to thank you, Lynette, for... Uh, please thank your bosses over at your hospital <laughs> for letting you out of the cage this right. afternoon. It's wonderful to have well, you with Well, thank you, Ruthie, for having me. Uh, yes, and we would thank uh, Debbie in Abstentia. She had to go pick up boys and girls at Grand Prairie That's High right. School. That's right. So we, we've let her off of the dais, but the, you and I can finish this show very readily, can't we? We can. All right, let's look out into our camera and finish it. And this is Ruthie Jackson reminding you, and would you join me? Okay. It's happening in Grand Prairie, Prairie Texas. Texas.